Time for another GED question of the day. Let's read the problem. It says, consider the rate of change of each of the following functions. Then consider, cho then choose the correct statement. Okay, consider the rate of change. So a lot of students lose their mind. They recognize that here they see a graph of a line. Let me get my pen out here. So they'll recognize this is a graph of a line, clearly. There's a line right there on a graph. And you might even do so well as to recognize this as the equation of a line. How do I know it's the equation of a line? Well, it's currently in what we know as slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. And you don't have to have this memorized. This is on your GED formula sheet. But the we know that anything that can be written in the form y equals m x plus b, where m and b are numbers, is um, this equation of a line. And this is written in that form. You might say to me, no, it's not, Kate. There's no y at all. But do remember that this function notation, we call this f of x, is just a fancy way of talking about y. I think of it like how you have a first name and a last name. Like if your name was Tom Jones, I could informally just call you Tom. Like if I know you well, I could call you Tom. That's like saying why. But if I don't know you well, I might call you Mr. Jones. It's like your formal name. That's like f of x. And for our purposes right now, that's all you need to know. So anytime you see f of x, that f of x notation, just cross it off and write y if it really freaks you out. And so I can see right here that I have y is equal to um, some number of x plus a plain old number b. And so this is the equation of a line. So I have a lot of students who at least recognize that, but what that confuses them is this wording. They say, consider the rate of change. And they'll tell me, Kate, uh, we did graphs in class. Um, we talked about lines. We graphed them. We talked about the slope. We talked about the intercept. We talked about points, but we never talked about a rate of change. And here's what you're not recognizing. A rate of change is how fast or how quickly something is changing. We do have something that measures how quickly something is changing when we talk about lines, and that's the slope. Slope and rate of change are completely synonymous. They mean the same thing. So if I ask you to compare the rate of changes, I'm really asking you to compare the slope. Um, so watch out for this trick on the GED. So really what they're asking me to do is find the slope of this uh graph and the slope of this equation and compare them. Uh, let's examine the slope of the graph first. Okay. Um, again, you may remember that you're going to want to start on a left point and go to a right point. It's the simplest way to do slope, not the only way. Okay. Um, and we are going to measure to find the slope, the rise over the run. How much is my line changing? Well, how much is it rising compared to how much is it running? How much is it going up compared to how much it's going over? So um, to get from this point to this point, I would have to go up one, two. I'm going to rise two. And to um, get from this point to this point, I know my graph is a little hard to read, um, but this is a um, negative three that I'm at. And if I go over here, I'm going to zero. So one, two, three. I just ran three. So my rise here is two, my run is three, and so I have a slope of two thirds. Now, over here on this equation of a line, you may remember that as long as the y is alone, it's in what we call slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b is slope intercept form of a line. And we call it that, like I said, because we're not super creative mathematicians. We call this line slope intercept form because the m is the slope and the b is the y intercept. You can thank your lucky stars that mathematicians are not super creative because now you don't have to remember it. You just have to remember the name of this thing is the slope-intercept form and because it shows us the slope and the y-intercept. And so what that means is that whatever number is multiplying with x, the coefficient of x is the slope. Uh, this throws a lot of students on this problem because they'll take a look at this and they'll tell me, Kate, there is no number multiplying with x, so the slope of this mine line must be zero. And I'm like, well, you really are confused about algebra if you think that this has zero x's. There's not zero x's. I see an x right here. 
So what's the invis invisible coefficient? The number out front of x when you don't see a number, it's 1. x is the same as 1x because mathematicians are lazy. We don't bother to count to 1. I just want you to imagine that if you're walking around the house and you were telling everybody, look, there's one table and we have one refrigerator, and there's one couch. Your whole family would be laughing at you because they can all count to one. They don't need you to do that for them. It's just the same way in math. If an X is just sitting alone by itself, we know that there's just one of him. And so this is one X. And so I know that the slope of this line is one, and that is tricky. Okay, so now let's compare these two. Let's look at our um, statements that we have. The first statement says, the rate of change of function a is greater than the rate of change of function, ooh, I'm missing a letter, should have been a function b, ooh, my goodness. So is that true? Is this number greater? Is two-thirds greater than one? No, of course it's not true. This is a proper fraction. I know a fraction is proper when its numerator is smaller than its denominator. The um, top of the fraction has a lesser value than the bottom of the fraction, then it's a proper fraction, and proper fractions always have a value that's less than one. Two-thirds is less than one, and so this is not true. Next one, the rate of change of function A is less than the rate of change of function B. Yes, absolutely. We said that the value two-thirds is less than the value one. This must be the right answer. And indeed, if we were to go on, the rate of change of function A is equal to the rate, no, two-thirds is not equal to one. That's a silly answer. So B is the correct answer. B. Yay.